Sweetie, how are you? Close are you well with Samantha Gaddafi? Samantha, hello, how are you today? Welcome to Well with Samantha with me, Samantha. It's nice to be back again. <laughs> um, I'm kind of enjoying these little weekly uh, updates and I know that they're going to evolve um, to bring you even more value at the moment. I feel like I'm giving you lots of information around the changes in the membership and in our weekly practices, um, which is really important right now, right? Um, because of all the changes and I want to make sure that you have all that information and, you know, um, so that when you want to sign up and join me, you can. Um, I feel like as all of that dust starts to settle, um, these will become more valuable to you, I hope, um, as I share other things, um, you know, link to our in-person practices, link to our online practices. Um, so, uh, so I hope that you stick around for um, those updates and those changes. Um, but today I really just wanted to um, give you the update finally <laughs> that the membership is now live. The, the WELL membership um, has evolved, it has changed and um, it is now the Breathe Well membership um, because that is my focus, that is my true sole purpose is to help people to become reacquainted with their breath and to discover its transformative power and to feel empowered when they breathe. Um, so um, I'm really excited to share with you that the doors are now open. I have my notes with me. Um, so if you see me looking down periodically, that's why. It's just so that I remember to give you all the information. Um, but the doors, the doors, the doors, the doors are now open for joining. You can sign up now. Um, we start on Monday the 3rd of October with our very first online live opening circle, which I'm so excited for. It's from 9am till 10am and it's a weekly uh, live online circle. Um, but we're opening, this is our opening circle because it's the first one in this new membership. And of course, the clue is in the name of the membership. There is a big focus on breath. Yes, there's movement. Yes, there's meditation. There's there's lots of other things as well. But the big focus is always coming back to the breath. So we start with an exploration of a book that I have started reading um, called the Upanishads. Um, and this is really because I... Um, you know, I read the Hatha Yoga Pradipika over summer. I've actually still got a little bit left to go. I'm probably going to reread it. <laughs> um, and um, and I thought, right, I like what what's next? What else can I read? And I have this real thirst for knowledge around yoga uh, philosophy because I, in my own experiences of being a student at yoga practices, haven't been to many where the philosophy has been included so for me for a long time I just thought yoga was like exercise I didn't really get the the difference between it and other forms of exercise um and I think that's why a lot of people initially come to yoga is because you know they see it as a form of movement and exercise which I guess you know in in the I guess it can be, right? Um, I personally don't agree that it should only be about the movement. Um, but if that's what we come into it for, and if that's where you start, uh, then I, as a teacher, it's my job to meet you where you're at, right? Um, but I want to bring you along the journey of diving into books like the Upanishads, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, um, the Bhagavad Gita, um, you know, I want to take you on that journey with me and explore all of their stories and their meanings and how we can apply it to our everyday life, not just on the mat, not just for the physical practice, right? Um, so we start with the exploration of the Upanishads, which I'm, I mean, 
I'm reading it I'm, and it's like blowing my mind, just like Hatha Yoga Pranapika did. So um, it's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. Um, but what is included in the membership? Well, we have a weekly live online circle every Monday from 9am to 10am. Um, and that's really where we come together and we share if we feel comfortable doing so, if we feel drawn to do so, we don't have to, it's totally optional. Um, and we explore the philosophies, we breathe together, we take the time to be still and reflect together and set our own personal intentions for the week ahead, or you could call it sankalpa, that's uh, what we call it in, in Sanskrit, it's a very personal um, thing. Um, we then also have a weekly pre-recorded practice that will go live every Thursday at 9am. Um, oh, just to backtrack, if you miss the live circle every week because 9am doesn't work for you, that's fine. It will be uploaded to the um, membership app and um, you can catch up on the replay. And I've done circles on replays. I've caught up with many things on replays. Um, and I don't believe that you lose the essence of feeling like you're a part of it. So um, so they will be uploaded so you never miss out. Then we have our weekly pre-recorded practice that will go live within the membership app every Thursday at 9 a.m. And this could be uh, breathwork or pranayama practice. This could be a physical yoga practice. It could be a guided meditation or creative visualization. It could be a yoga nidra. It could be a deep dive into the philosophy, maybe diving deeper than we did on the Monday. Um, it could be a workshop or a class that becomes more interactive and has uh, materials for you to work through so that you can um, dive deeper into your own personal self-study or svadhyaya. Um, so we really, um, it, it's really that opportunity for you to um, dive a little bit deeper into what we perhaps cover on the Monday morning in the live, right? Um, and you get instant unlimited access to what by that point will be over 100 videos. We're almost at 100 videos. So by the time the doors open on the 3rd of October, you will have 100 videos that you can access at any time for the entire duration of your membership. Um, they are there for you. So you have that library at your disposal. Um, how much does it cost? It's £29 for online only. If you want to join me for one of my sunrise yoga practices in Chichester or Southsea, um, then it is £45 per month. That gives you unlimited access to all the online and you get to come to as many in-person practices um, on a weekly basis as you want. The sunrise Chichester and sunrise in Southsea. It is a rolling monthly contract. So if you do it for a month and you're like, mm, this isn't for me actually, that's fine, you can cancel. There's no tie-in, no contract, none of that. Um, so you can cancel at any point and you can come back to it at any point. Um, if you join before November, before the end of November, sorry, you will lock in at that price and you will stay at that price. So if there's ever any changes to my pricing structure, it will never affect you. If you leave and then come back, that's obviously a different story. Um, so bear that in mind as well. The doors open on October 3rd, but you will lock in at that price um, if you join before the end of November this year. So the link is below in the caption. So please go and sign up, come and join us. Um, check out all the information on the webpage. It is all there and ready to go. I really hope that you will join us. We've got a wonderful um, community that is thriving already. Um, so I hope that you will come and join us. I cannot wait to see you for our first live. Um, but for now, I'm gonna leave you with a little bit of an update into my week and just a little bit of a way that I bring the concept of slow living into my everyday life, because that's also something that I really am trying to share with you as well through the membership. So let's get into it. 
This week I've spent more time in my garden observing my plants and flowers now that the weather is changing and we've had so much rain over after so much heat. We're really fortunate because we have a water butt so even though it's been so dry for a while last month we've still been able to water our plants with ease. Plus we've got a couple of fish tanks so every water change we do we save that water because it's full of nitrates which feeds the plants as well and even though we've not been in an area where there was a hose pipe ban, I've still been very conscious um, to really limit my use. Um, so we've been quite fortunate that we have access to the water, but and of course the fish tank water as well. And I noticed with all the rain last week that there were mushrooms growing in a few of my pots, as you can see in the lavender. Um, and other than physically pulling them out, I'm not really sure what else I can do because it's kind of the perfect conditions for mushrooms to grow. Um, so if there's any keen gardeners out there that have got any tips that don't include chemical weed killers, um, hit me up in the comments below because I'm not really sure what else I can do other than just physically pull them out. But look at my Olivia Rose Austin rose. She has flourished this month. I'll be honest, I pruned my roses back way too much after their first bloom this season. And I ended up with so many leaves and foliage. So I've really learned my lesson there. I just get so many aphids each year. But now we have more flowers and plants. I'm hoping that will attract more natural predators um, in the future to keep the aphids down. But we also had a lot of caterpillars this year. And I've noticed that I've not seen as many butterflies over the years. So I couldn't really bring myself to do anything about the caterpillars either. So lo and behold, I ended up with many leaves looking a bit raggedy um, and like they'd been eaten. So again, if anyone's got any tips that don't involve chemical pesticides, let me know in the comments below. I wish you could smell this gorgeous flower like I can though. She is beautiful. I tidied her up a little yesterday as well and she looks a lot neater now and I'm so proud of myself because I managed to brave two garden spiders that have decided she is their home and I am not a big fan of spiders. They scare the absolute shit out of me. <laughs> um, my Silas Mana Rose is new this year. We've had a couple of flowers but he'll be setting down his roots now ready for next year. I got him earlier this year in memory of my granddad Silas, who we lost last summer. He loved gardening and his roses were the most beautiful I've ever seen. So I just love roses because they remind me of him. And when I spend time in my garden, I always feel much closer to him to both my granddads actually. My granddad Les was always in his garden as well, tending to his fruit, his veg, his dams and trees, and the lavender that used to line his driveway. So I love lavender as well. The smell of lavender, it's like the smell of my childhood because it just reminds me of spending time with him in his garden and the summer holidays. When the flowers start to die off, I deadhead them and give them to the bunnies. Bunnies absolutely love rose petals and they're totally fine for bunnies to eat. Um, they are such a treat and it means there's no waste. So I always, always, always deadhead my roses um, and give the petals to the bunnies. They go crazy for them. We've been getting a beautiful Bengal cat visitors almost on a daily basis. Um, and he's very interested in our bunnies, who, by the way, are completely safe. But I noticed the other day when I got home after one of my um, practices, there was a cat collar inside their run, which means he has really tried to get in. So we've put this trellis across, which I'm going to start guiding the sweet jasmine to grow over. So not only will he not be able to get in because I think Bengals are pretty intelligent <laughs> um, and I was really worried that he was going to like manage to squeeze his way in um, so hopefully that will really uh, prevent that um, and put him off as well um, and also as the jasmine grows over it it will um, you know look a lot prettier than it does now. 
I also find this super cool app a while back called Picture This, which I've linked to in the caption. Um, I'm this is not a, an advert of any kind, but it's just an app that I find really helpful. So I thought I'd share it with you in case you're pretty new to gardening or even if you're a keen gardener. Um, there's an annual fee of about £30, um, but it's pretty cool because it can help you to identify almost any plants, flowers, herbs, trees, even weeds. Um, and so, for example, see this hibiscus. I bought it last year from Poundland. It so it was a pound and it literally was a stick. Um, and Matt was absolutely howling at me when he saw it and he was like, you need to throw that in the bin. It's a stick, Sam. That's not going to grow into anything. <laughs> but I thought, you know what? I'm going to plant it anyway and just see what happens. Like, give it time because it has to root first. Like, let's just see what happens. And lo and behold, a month later, it started sprouting. And here we are. A whole year later and it's thriving I mean look at it it's beautiful it's so green um so I'm hoping that maybe next year we might get some flowers from it but Matt is still in shock every day he's like I can't believe that that was a stick <laughs> I planted some tomato and pepper seeds about six weeks ago as well. I know, late to the party, um, but here we are. The tomatoes did not happen at all, but the peppers are sprouting. So I figured I'd take a minute to repot them because uh, they were just in a propagating pot to begin with. Uh, so I thought, you know what, let's put them in something a little bit deeper for now. So I always save my old yogurt pots for things like this because, again, it's just less waste. Um but I'm honestly, I'm so pleased. I don't know if we'll get any peppers this year, but hopefully for next year we will. Either my own cat Lila or the Bengal are using my peony as their toilet. I got an entire poo bag full of cat poo that had been buried quite deep. So if anyone's got any tips as to how I can put a cat off wanting to poo in my peony pot, <laughs> that would be much appreciated. <laughs> um, but I'd love to know, do you enjoy gardening? Is it something that brings you joy? I... I'm no expert at all. Um, I'm definitely no Monty Don, but I really enjoy being in my garden. And it just, I feel like time literally slows down when I'm in my garden. So um, I'd love to know, is it something that you enjoy as well? If so, do you have a favourite flower? Do you have a, a plant or a flower that you've grown that you're most proud of, like me with a hibiscus flower? Um, and do you like this content as well? Um, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for joining me this week. Um, if gardening is something that you enjoy, or if it's something that perhaps you're wanting to get into, but you're not really sure where to start, um, then follow along because I'm just sharing what I learn as I go. I am, like I said, I am no Monty Don at all, um, but I just love being in my garden and it's, it might not be the fanciest looking garden in the world, but I, I don't care. Um, it just makes me happy being in my garden, um, just looking at my plants and my flowers and just trying to understand like what's going on and what works and what doesn't work. Um, I, I've got like old books that my granddad Silas gave me, which literally like is the entire year um, for a gardener, which I think is helpful. But because the seasons, I feel like they're quite different to perhaps how they were when this book was written. Um, I really have to like, yes, use it as a guide, but just um, also be really conscious of actually what's truly going on with the weather. Um, but um, yeah, I just, I really enjoy it. And I think, you know, books and like magazine subscriptions help. Absolutely, they do. Like I've got, I've got my subscription to Gardener's World, which I really enjoy. Um, but I think nothing beats just getting 
into your garden and actually like observing what is going on and what is working, what isn't working and is a plant actually dying or does it just need a little bit of love and attention? Um, so yeah, let me know if you enjoy this content. Um, I think sometimes it's just nice to share part of your life that perhaps people don't necessarily know about. Uh, aphids, the whole aphid thing, like I, yeah, that I struggle with. I just kind of just brush them off um, when I see them, um, but they always come back. Um, the whole cat pooing in my peony pot, just that, I'm like, oh, that's a brand new plant. <laughs> it's like setting its roots down and you're pooing in there and weeing in there and it's gonna rot the roots. So um, yeah, any suggestions there, please tell me because that would be a massive help. Um, and, um, yeah, just let me know if you enjoy this content, um, or if you have your own gardening stories that you want to share. Um, and remember the membership doors are open so you can sign up. The link is below. Remember to like and subscribe if you are enjoying, uh, watching these videos and also remember to hit the notifications button so that you always know when my next video is live and I will see you next week. Take care, stay well. Bye.